that's our message to you guys here. Please listen to this. What makes the rich richer is that we use debt as money. We have a team and we do our best not to pay taxes. Is that the difference? That's absolutely the difference. The other thing, so I use now, I use debt to get rich mm -hmm. and I pay no tax. This is where you and I really line up. When you were playing the cash flow game, what came out of the game? Wasn't it your team or something? Oh yeah, I, I realized that I had to build a team and it yes. couldn't just be financial planners or people that gave advice. I wanted people that actually lived it, done it, were wealthy, that spent time with wealthy people. And it took me about a decade to build that team, maybe yes. a little bit longer. It was, I'm still building it was a heavy, team. And, you know, but I gotta tell you, it's paid off massively. Yes. I mean, that's that's one of my advantages that most people have is the yes. type of team that I have and that I built. And that's part of what we do is we build teams for people that way. Right. And this is the part what kills most people, okay? In school, if you operate with a team, it's called cheating. <laughs> exactly. So tell them, tell them what your team consists of today, because it's the same thing I say. It's my, my team is called my rich dad advisors. Right? Yeah. What do you call your? I team? call mine the accredited network, and in joking, I call them the financial nerd network because yes, these are people that love this stuff. Yeah. I mean, even even part of my team is having a guy that's good at understanding liability insurance. He can read any. He can tell you off the top of his head any contract, how it works. How to transfer risk, it's I amazing. You, I want you to do that. On my team too, it's not, not the rich dad advisor, but I have an insurance guy who reads all the insurance contracts. Yep. And so he'll say, hey, did you know if we structure this with an, uh, anyway, not going to content, but with That's an umbrella, then you're gonna save this money and you're gonna have $10 million more coverage. I'm going, genius, but that's what he looks for. Then other people I have on my team is like an estate planning and corporate structuring attorney. Right. So my asset protection trust, but he's also someone who's independently wealthy, has done a huge amount of real estate. He practices what he's he preaches. very well connected, he has billionaire clients. So I was like, look, I might be, when I start with him, I was one of his smaller clients, but I referred so many good people to him that he brought me into the inner circle right. and has been great to me. Who else is on your team? So on my team, I've also, I do have a registered investment advisor that helps me research and analyze deals. And he's also kind of my, no guy. What would? Why wouldn't I do this investment? You sniff out what's wrong with it and how we protect it. Then I also have a cash flow specialist that his job is just to look and analyze cash flow and make sure I look great to the banks. So when I go to a bank, I look good because my cash flow is good, yeah. collateral's right, credits there. So once again, it's, it's, these are big steps, but it's a change of the spirit, you know, the being in here. Because you know when I talk about, you know, you should have a team. What stops most people from having a team is, is in school, you were taught that you had to be the smartest guy. Yeah. Are you the smartest guy on your team? No. I'm not the smartest guy on my team. If I were, I'd be in trouble, right? Because yeah. because you always want you always want to room well, the, with people that help you grow. The most stupid people are people who think they're smart. And I've been that <laughs> person. You know, yeah. I know all the answers. I meet these guys who are PhDs, you know, MBAs, accountants, lawyers. They think they're the smartest guy and they don't ask for help, you know? And I was always a dumb shit in school, so I always ask the smart kids about stuff. So when it comes to investing, I look for the smartest guys that practice what they preach. So they're called rich dad advisors. It's bigger than their advisors. But I have Kenny McElroy who writes about real estate, yeah. but it's really about debt. I have Tom Real write on taxes. And Tom always says the reason people pay taxes is because they're afraid of the IRS. They're afraid of the IRS and you want to pay taxes? You're middle class. You should really listen to Dave Ramsey at that point. Yep. But if you're going to take on, if you want to be rich, you'd better know the laws of taxes yep. and you'd be, better be willing to be challenged by the IRS, get an audit and say, this is these are the rules. You see, but if you're a coward and you're afraid of the IRS, then you're middle class and poor. This is our whole message. Well, when, I, when I was 22 years old, I went to New York City and I was able to shadow a high-end financial person. I See, when I graduated college, I spent more money my first year out of college than all four years combined on my financial education. After two years, I spent more than any brain surgeon spent going to school to assemble a team and get the knowledge. But when I was 22, I had this epiphany. I walked into a family services firm. So you had to be worth $50 million to operate with this firm. But when I walked in, I got to sit there kind of as a fly on the wall and around the table was an entire financial team. There was in, there was advisors, there was fiduciaries, there was attorneys, there was accountants, bankers. At bankers, all at one table, 
making sure to analyze and do the proper due diligence on a deal that was coming through and making sure everything was coordinated so that it wasn't in the individual's name, it was completely something owned by an entity to protect him, that there was downside protection. I mean, I, and I said, I have to build that. Now, I, it was naive when I said that because it was a much bigger uh, situation it took to build that, but I actually created a process. Okay, so just remember this. You don't have a, you don't have a uh, financial planner, do you? No. Okay. And on my team, I have attorneys, accountants, and I have a banker. I have a banker who's the head of one of the largest banks right here. I just call him up and I tell him what I want to do. He'll take my phone call. So really, that's our message to you guys here. Please listen to this. What makes the rich richer is that we use debt as money. We have a team and we do our best not to pay taxes. Is that the difference? That's absolutely the difference. So what are your final words you want to say about it so people understand that? See, that's... So if, if you want to just follow the herd, be entrenched in the and sacred follow cows, the sacred yep, cows. I love then, it, you know? then just cut back, save money, live within your means, be and hope free. that you're going to be okay um, with the stock market, but be debt free. If you want to follow the rules of the rich, you have to have an amazing team an intelligent team. And when you do that, you'll pay less in tax because of how you utilize and leverage debt and it'll help you acquire assets and you focus on cash flow, not on 30 years waiting for retirement to come around. So those are some of the differences. Now, if you don't want to do that, then Dave Ramsey or Tony Robbins or Rick Edelman, perfect for you, right? That's, Absolutely. That's the biggest difference of all. The other thing is, are you afraid of a market crash? Not for me. No. You see, the other thing a person... I'll make more money during that. That's time. it. You see, the average person who is following the invest for the long term, they're terrified of a market crash. And the real reality is, when the markets come down, the rich get richer. Absolutely. Anything you want to say about that? Because well, actually, during the Great Depression, a third of the people did have that kind of poor mentality, and you see the pictures of them starving and struggling. But a third of the people actually maintain the middle class. They fought hard. It was a struggle, but they were okay. But a third of the people made more money because they looked at it a completely different way. And there was plenty of opportunity if you had the right site. Yeah. And I'm preparing all the time for the crash. Right. I prepare for the market to go up and for the market to come down. And you told me this great story of a guy who tried to save his, he was a mutual fund manager. Not he tried the, to the save. largest mutual fund in the world at and the he, time. And he tried to save his he customers. He tried to right? move money to save the customers, and he got fired because it was against the objective of the fund. He wasn't Did allowed you? to do it. I want you to hear that. He couldn't save his customers because he was a mutual fund manager. It was against the law. What did he do that broke the law and he got fired? He moved too much money into bonds because he thought the stock market was going to have a dip, and he was one month early. The stock market, as we remember, in October of '98 had a major dip. He was right, but lost his job at the same time. Because a mutual fund can only do one thing. Do what it's told. Yeah, if you if you say, we're gonna invest in puppies, you can't move them into kitty cats. Yeah, even if you know kitty cats is the place right. to be. So the people who are buying that idea of invest for the long term, you know, if you're in mutual funds, you'll probably get wiped out. If yeah. you're investing in up market when it's coming down, right? Yeah, I, re I remember in 2005, I handed Rich Dad Poor Dad to one of my clients. He gave it to his son. His son was intrigued enough to come to one of our events, going, okay, if this is the guy that gave the book. At the end of the eight hours, he says, okay, I'm an airplane engineer. I design airplane engines, and I have $75,000 in 401k. I make $75,000 a year, but you know what? I'm gonna make a change, and in one year, I'm gonna create enough income for my investments to cover my basic expenses. And I was like, that's pretty bold, but he did it in 362 days. He did it by going, he didn't have enough money of his own, so he used debt. He bought a real estate portfolio over time and it created enough cash flow. And then he got to do what he really wanted to do after that. He right. had the money to do what he wanted right. to do. So I would just say this, we're not just saying go out and borrow money because you have to be smart with what you do. Absolutely. Debt is very dangerous stuff. If you don't want to study how to use debt, then use cash, right? Absolutely. So that's go back to those middle class and poor Yeah, let's just go back and save money and, you know, uh, live debt free. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. You've got, if your gut can't handle what we do, stay middle class or stay poor. 
So the final thing is this. I think this is the worst thing I can say. So pay attention. If you're poor or middle class, do we want them on our team? On our team? No. No. Sorry. And that's the worst part. You know, I have so many friends come up to me. They're great people. I like them dearly. I know their kids and all this. They want to invest with me. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't because you're poor and middle class. Because you inside, play by different rules. Yeah, but you don't have it inside of you. Yeah. You don't have the education. You know, when you were kids, I mean, I played softball and I played football and all this stuff. And I was a guy that's, you know, they, you know, they say, okay, we got, let's say, 10 guys and we're going to choose five. And they go, one, two, three, four, you. And then I was always the five. You know, I was one of the, one of the guys, well, the five that wasn't picked. And that's what happens when you're poor and middle class. The rich don't pick you. You know, they say, I'm sorry, you don't, you don't qualify to make the team. So everything Garrett and I are saying is why well, it's good to put a team together. But if you're not a rich person, nobody wants to be on your team. Is that correct? Absolutely not. So you got to invest in yourself. You've got to invest in financial education and you got to be serious about it because no one else is just going to get you there on there. It's not some magic thing that happens overnight. It is a commitment. Yeah, I just I just lost a really good I've, I've lost many good friends, but they come to me, they tell a good story and I try to help them out. But they did not do what Garrett did. They don't study. You know, they think if they hang out with me, they'll get rich. You know what I'm talking about? I do know that. And they come around and they're friends and all this, but all of a sudden, you know, I'm, you, know, you borrow $300 million. You better have a financial statement to do that, right? Absolutely. And the guy didn't have a financial. He said, well, can I get in the deal? And said, I'm sorry, you don't have enough money. You bring nothing to the table. You know, there's nothing. We don't need you on our team. What do you bring to us? It's not just who you know, it's what you know, too. Yeah, and what? And are you a player? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the worst thing about it is, is by having <laughs> the old sacred cows in your head, nobody wants you on the team except old cows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm being as harsh as I can because we want you to move on. But the most important thing is to be true to yourself. Look, if you can't control your spending, Susie Orman, listen to her, listen to her, listen to her. If you really don't like risk, then live debt free exactly as Dave Ramsey says, or Tony Robbins says, or Rick Elliman and David Bach. But if you like, my friend is Donald Trump right up there. You know, we play by a different set of rules. Absolutely. But you got to qualify to make that team. Absolutely. And that's probably the most important lesson for you. One's not right or wrong, it's just what's right for you. And the last thing I'll say by my friend Donald, I think is really funny. You know, he's, you have to know what he's saying on him. He gave out his tax plan. And I just laughed at his tax plan when he's running for president. And he says, this, uh, you know, this plan, this plan. But what he doesn't tell you is those are the tax plans for the poor and middle class. Because the rich don't pay taxes legally. But if you're afraid of paying taxes, then you should be poor middle class. You're afraid of the IRS, then you should be poor middle class. So I hope we've you know, done our best to say it's what's best for you. What's best for you determines who you should listen to. Poor, middle class, and rich. Final words for you. Well, thanks for taking the time today. Oh, nice always goodness. always love people to think about having their assets be turned into cash flow to get rid of these sacred cows of accumulation, of diversification, of all that stuff. And instead, if they're willing to embrace the rules of the rich and be able to, you know. Well, it might not be right for them. Yeah, and if they're not. So that's our whole list. That you'll know. This will turn you off. And you yeah. know, that doesn't make sense. And that's me. why I really liked it when I was reading your blog. You had, when you read Millionaire Next Door, you said, you knew something that didn't fit yep. you. But you read Rich Dad Poor Dad and it fits you. Yeah. And that's our lesson to everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Want to master your money? Want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances? Click here and check out more videos like this on Money Matters.